But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. There is no other industry where competition has driven more technological achievements than this, the hypercar world. McLaren, Porsche, Ferrari, Pagani, Bugatti, the big five. The modern day hypercars as we know them. These cars are the meanest, baddest, fastest, and most expensive production cars to ever be built. They're the direct result of one thing and one thing only, competition. The direct rivalry between all the major car makers is what created these cars. And today we finally put them all to the test around the track and also in the quarter mile to find out which one's the fastest. We're gonna do this with all five cars and just one pilot. All of these cars are regular customer cars. None of the cars have been modified and they're all running on stock tires. There's one thing no one can deny. Bugatti created the original hypercars we know it today with this, the Bugatti Veyron. About 12 years ago, VW set themselves to make history by creating the most mental and crazy car to ever exist. A car that would be able to do 240 miles an hour without a single effort. That is obviously the Bugatti Veyron. The Veyron actually ended up being expensed to VW and Bugatti. Each unit that they sold cost them about $6 million and that was a loss making it a bargain for those filthy rich that can buy one of those bad boys. And now we're inside of the Bugatti Veyron Super Sport, the craziest thing I've ever driven. That W16 engine on the back is beyond huge, and you can feel it, you can hear it, yet the car is so comfortable. Bugatti made 450 of these during the 10-year course that they produce these cars. This one being the Super Sport, I believe they only made 42 worldwide and only eight examples were delivered to the US. As you can see, Bugatti created the original hypercar, but not the last one. Every single other car maker wanted a piece of the pie, so they dumped all of their resources into creating their own hypercar to compete against Bugatti's very own. And the results are astonishing, which leads us to this. The wire is what really put Pagani into the competition for the hypercar space. Horatio didn't have the money that Bugatti had, so he had to work really, really smart. Although the car only has 730 horsepower, I mean only has 730 horsepower, the car is extremely light. It weighs only 1,350 kilos, making it one of the lightest cars here today. The power to weight ratio is exactly what's putting the wire in that competitive space to say, I'm here. Get ready, Bugatti. The Pagani Wyra might be the best looking one in the group. However, this wasn't Pagani's first attempt in the hypercar space, but this was the car that took the world's attention. My favorite thing about this Wyra is that engine. Even though it doesn't have battery assistance and it doesn't have a 16, uh, very fancy 16 cylinder engine, it gets the job done. It's got quite a lot of torque. The car is very light and nimble. The suspension is absolutely unbelievable. You can't believe how the car drifts on stock tires without anything at whatever speed you put it through. I really hope the Wyra wins today because that's my baby. And what are you here for if you're not here to win, right? But unfortunately, there's a lot of competition. And the next one that we're about to show you comes from a small place called the UK, from a brand you barely heard about, McLaren. I'm Paul Woodman, and this is the first of the modern age hypercars to have battery-assisted power. It's the McLaren P1. All right, Paul, let me uh, just stop you right there. What are you doing? It's a British car. I'm a British no, guy. No, 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 no. What? It doesn't work like that. There's no Mexican car, British car. And let me show you how to do this properly, son. This is the first of the hypercars that is battery-assisted. This baby is the McLaren P1. Huh? That Much sounds better. Like, I, I, I like yours better. 
McLaren has been pushing the envelope for years with their F1 racing team, but now everything is translating into street performance. McLaren has always been known for pushing the envelope, and they totally did with this masterpiece of a car. Did you hear that? Holy crap. It really does sound like a spaceship. All right, we're inside of the P1 right now. This right here is what drapes are made out of. I love everything about McLaren. They made my most favorite car of all time, which is, which is the McLaren F1 LM. But that's 30 million bucks and uh, I'm a little shy. So the P1 might be a good second one. This one doesn't have a gold-plated engine, but I don't think any of the owners are gonna feel cheated about that with the performance that this thing puts out. The Porsche 918 Spyder is exactly a showcase of evolution. An evolution that happened within 10 years for Porsche from their Carrera GT. This has two battery motors, one on the front, one on the back, and that produces about 287 horsepower. Just by that alone, you have instant full torque at idle. That means the moment you step on the gas, the car is giving you all of its power and it's linear. It still goes, 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 goes. There's no stopping to the power. The acceleration is intense, the braking is formidable, and the battery regeneration system that it has is absolutely stunning. You just put that thing in race mode and the car will charge up faster than you can possibly imagine, giving it full boost at all times. One thing I love about this thing is how easy it is to engage in the launch control. In every other car, either you're pressing a button and you're gonna have to wait a little bit, or if you wait too long, it's gonna disengage it, or you're gonna have to go through a seven-step process like in the Bugatti Bay run, which is not an easy fit, honestly. But the 918, everything is just so simple. The results are amazing, and that's what made it my favorite car. And that right there is the Ferrari LaFerrari, the most sought after hypercar ever made. And in Ferrari tradition, of course, they only made 499 of them, making it one of the most sought after cars of all time. And no other car makes that noise, of course, because this is the only one with a V12 engine. It's a massive engine Ferrari put in there just to stay true to their roots. And on top of that, they added a battery motor to that to add instant torque. And the combination, as you can see, is absolutely ridiculous. This thing is ridiculous! How? How is this real? How are these brakes so large? The active air on the back, just looking at the wind, grabbing the corner right here getting out, ready for the straight line. And the car just moves. I'm not even a good driver, I need moves. Look at this. Sorry, it's actually pretty hard to drive this fast and talk at the same time. God, I can't wait to see the numbers of this thing pulled. This is gonna be like the bar setter right here. So which one of these hypercars is the best? There's only one way to find out.